We're going to continue now in a fifth section, which I don't think I've ever done before, but I wanted to spend good time uh, on the entrance gospel. Now we have the passion narrative in cycle C, Matthew, Mark, Luke, so it's Luke, and it runs, as you can see from your missile, Luke 22, 14 to 23, 56. I just want to point out certain um, points here as Luke is doing them. Um, now, it's interesting the way it starts, you see. When the hour came, uh, it says, uh, uh, 22.14, you see. When the hour came, uh, the hour of the Passover supper, you see. Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. The apostles, he's always calling now apostles, they're already apostles. Not just the gang, the crowd, the friends, the followers, the fishermen, the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. That's quite a revelation, isn't it? Jesus eagerly wants to eat this Passover with them before he gets crucified. He I have a baptism with which I am to be baptized and how I am straightened until it be accomplished. He wants to die for us. It's going to cost him everything, especially in the agony in the garden. But he wants to die for us. And so, uh, and then he has his own. Paul and Luke have the same way of ordering the account of the Last Supper. Uh, in other words, now that I'm beginning the first thing I'm going to do is offer my body and my blood uh, to you in bread and wine and to the Father. So when I die on the cross, every time you invoke this and the Holy Spirit overshadows it and changes it, it will be my body and blood. And you will be living on the body and blood that I, that I gave up for you. It will be filled with light, generosity, fire and power. If you take it in that way, I can change you into a saint. So that's why he says, I've eagerly desired to do this. Uh, and then he took a cup, gave thanks and said, take this and share it among yourselves, for I won't drink of this again until the kingdom of God comes, which is through his resurrection. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. So simple, isn't it? He took the bread, blessed it, said Barukata Adonai Elohim and so forth. You see, broke it and gave it to him. And said, this is my body. This doesn't stand for my body. This is my body. And then, likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. This will fulfill Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh, 31, where there's a promise of a new covenant. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Not like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them out of the desert. This will be a new covenant. And this is what it will be. I will write my law in their hearts. And then they will have the principle within them, the Holy Spirit himself, to make real response to me. I'm going to die for you love you, guide your life, and now you receive me and identify yourself with me with that act, which is why we start the day with that washing of the feet, which is the preaching, the prophecy of this. The Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve. And his service, to give his life as a ransom for men. That's his diaconia. So that's what's being said. And yet, there's the hand of one, and now we start. And I've done, showed you this before. So, uh, the hand of one is to betray me. The Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Wow. So now we're going to look at two sinners. Betrayal, betrayers, 
one who repented and one who didn't. The church is saying, you're all re- betrayers. Now take your choice. Do you want to be like Peter and repent and be a saint? Or do you want to be like Judas and just pout, maybe even kill yourself? You got your choice. The Son of Man, behold, the hand of the one who has betrayed me is with me on the table. This is a very different, this is Luke's account of these words, you see. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And so, now what are they going to do? Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? That's the way the synoptics put it. Luke says, And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. You see. And then an argument broke out about who was the greatest. They're at the Last Supper. They know what he just said, I'm going to die for you today. And they want to know who's the big shot. Isn't that awful? We do it. We go to Mass and then we fight about who's going to run the, the parish altar society, whatever. Instead of just, I can, anywhere I can serve, I'll be happy. That's what Jesus did. And so he says that. The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them and those in authority are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. That's not the way I want you to live. This is at the the uh, threshold to the passion. I want you to imitate me. Lay down your life for each other. You see? And then, and this is kind of, in this form, unique to Luke. Simon, Simon, not Peter, notice, Simon. Behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you, not just Simon. You're the leader, Simon. I'm telling you, Satan wants to sift all of you like wheat. Separate you out. Throw you away. But I have prayed that your own faith, that's Peter's faith, you see, may not fail. And Once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. That's Peter, the Pope. Because it's only in John that you have that place, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Here, Jesus makes him the leader here. So Peter says, I'm prepared to go to prison and die with you. And he says, Peter, let me tell you, before the cock crows this day, you'll already deny me three times that you even know me. That's our fearless leader. If he's changed and he dies on the cross, it's because of the work of God in him. So, why don't we imitate Peter? Be faithful to the Lord. You see? Uh, And then, uh, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, did you need anything? No. Well, now you're going to need stuff. And there's going to be conflict. In fact, he says, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. Whew. This is rhetorical speech in a way. We're not supposed to get in guns, gun control or whatever we're up against now. Uh, no. And then he went out to the garden of olives. And this is the moment the whole future of the world hangs on this decision. And Satan knows it. So as he goes away to pray, you see, um, now, uh, the, the Matthew and Mark are more graphic. He fell on the ground. This one says, uh, Luke tells us, when he arrived at the place, he said, pray that you may not undergo the test. That's the translation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Uh, I wish I could find that quickly for you. Uh, uh, I was the Akonomi. Uh, yeah, here it is, you see. Uh, after withdrawing about a stone's throw, so there's a test, there's a pedos moan, there's a temptation. Jesus and the disciples who are supposed to be supporting him. What are they doing? They're sleeping. 
Now, that's a warning to the leaders of the church. There will be eschatological moments, moments of crisis in the life of the church. Don't be asleep. Don't be sleeping. Don't be so interested in money and parties and power and popularity that you miss it. You see? Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, but not my will, yours be done. And then only Luke tells us, and to strengthen him, an angel appeared to him. And he was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. Psychiatrists can tell us what kind of pressure that is. You see? He was sweating blood. Then he rose from prayer, returned to his disciples. He found them sleeping from grief. They knew something was going to happen, and they were trying to just blip out and hope it didn't happen, or it passed them by or from sleep. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not be subject to temptation. The temptation. The temptation is to fall away from your faith. If you sin and repent, but if you fall away from the faith, who are you going to repent to? You see? Then the crowds come, and Judas comes up to him, and you know the rest of the story there. I'm going to skip a bit, but if you take the time before you go to Mass on Palm Sunday and read this yourself, asking the Holy Spirit, open up my heart and my mind, huh? And so then, you know, Peter cuts off this fellow's right ear, and then in this translation, stop, no more of this. And he touched the servant's ear and healed him. That's Luke. And Jesus said, you've come out looking for a robber? Every day I was in the temple area with you. But this is your hour. And the hour for the power of darkness. Those words refer back to the temptation of the desert. When after having conquered Satan for three times, Luke says he left him for a time. He's coming back. And now he's back. He's going to subject this man to every torture known, mental, physical, spiritual, and break him. So he'll turn from his father, but he won't. And that's why we're saved. He's got these men he's stirred up who hate him. He's got the the rest, and they're going to stand there and laugh at him, but he's not going to break. Um, And then we have Peter's denial that I pointed out to you before. The liturgy says, look, there's two people, two renegades, two deniers. There's Judas and Peter. And you're a renegade. You're a denier. Which one are you going to be? Judas or Peter? Are you going to just walk away and say, whatever I've done, it's too bad? Which is just a cloak for not wanting to convert. If you really were sorry, you'd run to him and say, oh, help me. Whatever is wrong, please help me. You can do it. I'm sorry enough. But rather than that, no, no, no. I don't want to humiliate myself and ask for pardon. So I think I'm not going to get it. Jesus is saying, don't be so stupid. I'm dying for you. Come to me. I can make you a saint. This man, Peter, is going to deny me three times and I'm going to make him the first pope. And I'm going to bring him to heaven with me as the prince of the apostles forever and ever. And so, then, you know the rest of the story, um, and Luke has got some particularly things that are about, you know, him, him, that are himself. Um, and so, then, when the people saw the spectacle, that is, he died, I'm skipping, uh, they went home beating their breast. And so, the women who had come from Galilee with him <coughs> followed behind when they were burying him. When they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned. Because the full burial wasn't done, you need spices to preserve the body and so forth. They're going to come back. The women are going to come back. The guys are going to go hide. But the women are going to come back. And so you see, this is how the passion narrative passion narrative ends on Palm Sunday. Who, again, are you going to be Judas or Peter? Are you going to be the women or the men? Are you going to stick with Jesus? 
Amen.